Hello and welcome back. In my last video, the Dell Venue 8 Pro desktop quality PC gaming video, a viewer asked if I could make a new video that shows gaming on the LG Nexus 5. So today I would like to take a look at some of the games that I have installed on my Nexus 5 and show the performance of those. So let's take a look. So here we have the Nexus 5, uh, manufactured by LG, and it is a very good smartphone, very powerful. It has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor, see if I can get that to focus there. And with that processor, it has a very powerful GPU as well, so it can play the latest games. So we're going to go into my gaming folder here, and here are some of the games that I play on my Nexus 5. The first one I'll demonstrate is Crazy Taxi. I've been a fan of Crazy Taxi for many years, ever since it was a Naomi Arcade game and then ported to the Sega Dreamcast. Hey, and so we'll take a look and see how it runs on the Nexus 5. So you can play Crazy Taxi pretty much on any console or computer within the last 10, 14, 15 years, starting from the Dreamcast and Arcade all the way up to today on Android. And if you've never seen Crazy Taxi before, the goal is to pick up your passengers and deliver them to their destinations as quickly as possible. The crazier you drive, for example, driving on the wrong side of the street while dodging traffic without hitting anything, your passengers, they pay you more money. You can play by arcade rules, which is you pick up a passenger, you drop them off, you earn more time. So if you play really well, you can play for an extremely long amount of time. Um, back in the Dreamcast days, me and my friend, we would play arcade rules, and we were so good, the game would last literally for four or five hours. We'd pause it, go to the mall, come back, and continue, because we would have accumulated so much time. Or you can just play by the time rules. So we're going to work for three minutes. So three minutes is all I have, and I, it's best to make as much money as I can within those three minutes. I think I'll stick with Axel. You got drive, reverse, left and right. So you can hold drive to go. You can double tap drive to boost. And reverse is actually your brakes as well. The arrow at the top is showing me the direction I need to go in. And if I don't hit the cars, then I get like the little money that's popping up in the air. That's my passenger giving me more money. It's kind of hard to play looking through the camera that I'm using, which is my Lumia 1020. So I have it on a miniature tripod with the Nokia camera grip. And so she's throwing out extra money as I'm jumping in the air. Okay. Pull inside the green lines to drop them off. So the game runs extremely well on the Nexus 5. The Snapdragon 800 processor and GPU is an excellent combination for gaming. My only complaint with Crazy Taxi on Android is that it's not, it hasn't been updated as the iOS version has. So for example, there's some things missing and I'll stop the car to show you. For one, there isn't a shadow beneath the car. And then the second thing is there isn't any self-shadowing. So self-shadowing is when the object cap cast a shadow unto itself. So from his fenders here, there should be a shadow cast on the back of the car. So when I turn, you should see the shadow move on the car. But that's completely missing. And it has nothing to do with the Nexus 5. It's just that Sega and whoever they hired to program this game didn't add the self-shadowing or actual shadows at all onto the Android version. And also, the engine sound is just making one generic sound. But again, that's nothing against the Nexus 5. And it's actually just something against the version um, for Android. So I'll go ahead and exit because I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. So we'll move on to another game. And I could just hit the home button to go back. So we'll go back to my gaming folder. And let's take a look at Real Racing 3. Apologize for that. I actually was knocking over my 1020. And it's kind of funny because I chose to catch my 1020 and toss my Nexus to the side. 
Um, either way, the Nexus is pretty tough. It's made out of plastic, but it's not utterly cheap. So I didn't experience any dents or anything like that. And my 1020 is still safe. Some of the dangers you take. But no, seriously, um, everything's fine as far as that. We're going to go ahead and take a look at Real Racing 3. A fantastic game, might I say. But uh, some people do think that you get nickel and dimed or you have to pay real money to play this game. I've been playing Real Racing since it was launched on iOS. And I have yet to pay any real money. But if you're impatient, then you could pay real money to skip ahead. So let's take a look. We'll go in here and go to one of these races here are some of the cars that I have I'll just choose that one there and as you can see it runs really really smoothly I'm just in the loading menus and everything and once the game loads you'll be able to see the performance and fortunately for this game the developers did a good job of porting it over from iOS so it's not missing any shadows or anything like that you get the same graphics and the same performance that you do on your iOS devices. And it's really a good looking game. So I have mine set for tilt controls and I have my assist on low. So the game is assisting with acceleration and it's assisting with braking, but it's on the lowest possible settings. So that way I can still use the brakes by tapping the screen and help myself turn. Because when you have it on the higher assist levels, it's pretty aggressive and it will cause you to break harder than you should, which means you'll probably end up not winning the race or at least not um, get ahead as quickly as you could. So there aren't any slowdowns in this game. It's been highly optimized to run on Android and the Snapdragon 800 processor has plenty of graphical muscle to power through this game. You can change your view. You can look back. The view button's up there, and I actually ran off the road. Shouldn't look back when driving. And so the Nexus 5 is excellent for gaming. It has a large 5 inch screen, and the screen takes up the majority of the device. As you can see there's not much on the edge of the, the phone. And it's going to cost money. One thing I would like to note is that Real, Real Racing 3 has been updated to enable immersive mode. Immersive mode on Android, what that does, it allows you to see the full screen, the applications to go full screen instead of having the black bar on the side. So when you are playing games like this on the Nexus 5, which doesn't have any physical buttons, if you don't see your menu screen, the question is, how do I get out of this? Well, immersive mode, you slide your finger from the top, and then it pulls up your on-screen buttons. But if you don't want those, they, they disappear. So hopefully that in Windows Phone 8.1, since they're going to have on-screen buttons, hopefully Microsoft thought far enough ahead to include an immersive mode. So then I can just go to the home screen to quickly exit out of the game. I got all these other things open too. Now let's go into another game. So we've looked at a couple of driving games. Let's go into virtual tennis. And there at the bottom we list that this game was designed for the Snapdragon processor by Qualcomm. And I've loved Virtual Tennis as well since the Dreamcast days. Okay. Gonna go ahead and begin match. It's me at the bottom so I can move. And then I can swing, which I haven't played this in a long time. See, this doesn't have immersive mode enabled, so I have persistent bars here, on screen buttons here on the side. So I like to have it to where the controls are you just move on the screen and you swipe to hit. You can actually have on screen buttons instead if you prefer that control method. 
So now I'm facing a level 2 person. So the graphics are really good. Everything's smooth. Now I'll try to at least get one more point before I exit. There we go. As you can see, everything is clear and detailed. So I will go ahead and exit to the home screen. And we can swipe virtual tennis away, go back to our games here. Let's play another game, Sonic Dash. And these games are, are fairly um, easy games to play. It's kind of like Temple Run, you swipe in different directions to move Sonic. You can jump, you can roll across the ground to avoid things. And looks like they're giving me an advertisement, which I do not want. I don't want to get it now, whatever it was saying. All I want to do is play. And there's another advertisement. And another one. Hmm. So it would be nice if I could go into the game without advertisements. Let's see. Let's go back home. And I don't want the tips. All I want to do is play, so I'll just hit play. Okay. So you're running. So you can swipe to the side. I can jump. You can roll the spin. And I could have rolled to actually kill them. Can't roll to kill that without getting hit. Which can for those. So the Nexus 5 is, is definitely a good game. Um, a good phone to play games in or on. So you want to roll under the obstacles. Okay, and so that is Sonic Dash. And I fell off the cliff. So I'll go ahead and skip that. And I don't want to log into Facebook. So it does support immersive mode. As you can see, my buttons are missing. So since it is in a vertical mode, I don't swipe from the side. I still swipe from the top, which is now up there to get my buttons back. And let's play one last game. Let's go into Max Payne, which is a, a game I used to play a lot on the PC and the Xbox. And Max Payne has really good graphics for Android. It's pretty much a port of the PC version. As you can see, there are my on screen buttons there. Okay, looks like they, that threw off the focus a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and resume game. Actually, this save file is from my H HTC One S from years ago. So I haven't played Max Payne since then, but I kept my save file around. So you move Max, and you can look around like that. It runs a lot better on the Nexus 5 than it did on the 1S, since the processor on the 1S was not as strong as the Nexus 5 processor. And I'm getting shot at by a guy there. So what I should do is be prepared to shoot him back. Okay, I can jump over there. 
Let's put on here some weapons. And there is a sniper rifle. Which, as you can see, I haven't played this in a long time. But, all I want to demonstrate today is the gaming power of the Nexus 5. And I hope that through these videos, you've been able to get a good idea of what kind of performance you'll get um, when using the Nexus 5. So I just remember how to change weapons. So let's see. And remember I'm looking through I'm actually looking through the camera on my phone. Got him. So that's Max Payne on the Nexus 5. And I would recommend the Nexus 5 to anyone. It is a cheap enough device without a contract. Mine was $399. It is the 32 gigabyte version in the white color. They do have black and I believe red as well. Um, 5 inch 1080p screen quad core processor with very powerful GPU and great viewing angles and all of that good stuff. So I recommend the Nexus 5 to anyone who likes mobile gaming as you won't be disappointed. And it's this NBA Jam. So just to show you. So everything is fast and smooth. Oh, pretty tough. Do that too. And that's gaming on the Nexus 5. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me in this video. It's another long one, 17 and 30 seconds. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave comments below if there's anything in particular that you like to see on the Nexus 5 or on the Dell Venue 8 Pro or anything concerning Nokia devices and services. Thank you again for coming to visit and thank you for your previous comments on my previous videos. I hope you guys have a great day. Take care and I will see your comments next time.